So now, there's a question frequently uh, asked is, uh, okay, we have these, these dried leaves of persicaia, how can we die with? So it seems that it's almost impossible because it is not soluble in water because the cellulose of the plant is dyed actually with the genuine content. So the blue is appearing, so that makes the challenge even more difficult, apparently difficult, because I will show you. First, we need a solvent to, for this extraction to soften the cellulose of the leaves. This solvent is caustic, caustic potassium. We will make ours very easily. So I have this container here. I will put a funnel on it and then some cloth and then I will put some wood ash. Any wood, ashes from any wood, that's the neighbor giving that. Of course I did not ask the type of plant, the type of tree, it doesn't matter actually we are doing kind of prehistoric reconstitution. On that I put water and then I will have the pot ash solution, you know, from the ash and from the pot, we have the pot ash. So, this solution is interesting because it is slightly basic, but when in contact with lime, this has potassium carbonate in it, but when in contact with lime, it will give a caustic potassium a small amount, of course a very small amount, but that's enough to soften the cellulose of the leaves and then we will have the extraction of the indigotin. So extraction is not enough because you remember that it must be reduced and also it must be um, alkaline to fix on the, on the fabric. So we will have those things together. Alkalinity will come from the mix we are preparing and then we'll put those leaves uh, uh, to be softened in and I will add a bit of sugar or any sweet matter just to uh, Im improve the reduction because in this mix I have nothing really to reduce correctly. Will, will not be enough sugar in these dried leaves actually because uh, they are not uh, precursors, uh, they are already oxidized, so well, the form is, is not suitable. So first I need to prepare my potas oh, from ashes. Okay. So we have enough potassium carbonate, I will put my leaves in. There's kind of reaction already foaming a little bit. Now I will have a little bit of lime. You see it's turning super yellow. And then I'm expecting the leaves to go to the bottom. At the moment they are cooked enough, they're hydrated enough, they will go to the bottom. If it's still floating, it means we didn't extract enough. Must not wait for bacteria to come and reproduce and make plenty of babies to develop a civilization. No, 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 it's not fermentation actually. It is just organic reader. First blue bubbles appear. Very small amount, but it is a little bit bluish. You see the bubbles coming in the middle of the, of the of the mess. It takes some minutes for the leaves to be hydrated. So now it's kind of a little bit of metallic coat. It means that some of the indigo is already reduced from the content of sugar which is in the plant, which is probably not enough. So I will add a pinch more, but first of all I will try to find a little piece of uh, fabric to test it. Okay, so here we are. We have little blue bubbles, it starts to be a bit coppery at the surface. So I guess it is but the bubbles are pale, they are not they are not very dark, they are not very big, they are blue, absolutely blue, but they are flat. I want a little 
mountain of bubbles and then it is floating too much for that so maybe I will try with more water I will start again and I can see that it is improving improving so this is time for testing I will test with a small piece of fabric uh, imagine now I'm keen on my uh, lovely silk so I want to dye the silk in what you think is it possible well we said if it's very hot, it's hot yeah. it will not take correctly yeah. so I will start with a piece of cotton and in case I have results I will add the sugar and I will be able to dye more of wool or cotton uh, but for the silk I will have to be patient enough to wait for it to cool and at the moment it will cool correctly maybe well not more than 30 degrees I will be okay for the silk but remember the water is coming from the kettle okay first test oh it's doing something okay let's rinse and we cannot say that there's nothing but it is the very very beginning of the system but obviously we have something on the fiber obviously but it is not enough so I have two possibilities first I want the sediment to go at the bottom so I will increase the density of the preparation by having a bit of more lime so but by having more lime you know that's my method to avoid the, the the plants to float. We can have the dye of this piece and then I will run could be any fruit peel, any juice or even wild plant but I prefer for this short demo I prefer the fructose from the beet but it's not a fatality you know you can change that we had very beautiful things with apple juice so let's see how it, how it is now I would like so it's it's coming obviously it's coming so now a bit of reducing agent bubbles are turning a bit bigger so I think it's on the way except it is floating too much but anyways I'm sure I will oh yes I will okay so one minute we need patience for the sediment to go at the bottom not to float in between because you see when rinsing we have plenty of leaves and it is not clean so I prefer to be patient enough when cooking the leaves uh, waiting for them to go to the bottom and then from that I will have a clean pot you see now it is improving so I will see how it is yes we have it actually it's coming better yeah. so I will change my water and try we will have it much much better after some time but you understand the system we have to un uh, dye the, the leaves the blue leaves must be discolored and then the, the coloring matter must turn back to the to the dye pot but I guess that now we can try really so look at this this is really reduced right really strongly reduced so if we rinse it will turn blue so greenish blue and we will see and it's coming you see but it's coming but very very slowly because the leaves are, are still floating I guess that in one hour or tomorrow but you see the difference is quite important now before we soak again we have to wait for it to really oxidize and maybe after one hour at the moment it will be cooling we will try the silk on it of something but let's see how it is so the reduction of these leaves the vat of leaves is not bad at all we can see okay very good reduction so it will give a good a good blue on the cotton and now despite it is a bit hot I will like to try 
the silk you see there's harness color appearing so now let's try that little piece of silk get an idea of how it is see that it is in progress it is changing gradually to get the, the, the blue so my first dip oh that's a struggle so I'm sorry it was not it is still floating but you will see the silk beautiful anyways that's a very very simple method to get to this that beautiful shade on and by repeating you will have it excellent but that's the first the first step of uh, silk dyeing with the leaves you see so I will have a second at least a second dip and we will and back to that I will show how to oxidize a bit but let's finish the one of course you can see that the silk is taking a bit darker but even a handful of leaves which is uh, too slow for oxidizing so sometimes we can help with a bit of vinegar so to eliminate the lime so the oxidization is better maybe I still have vinegar so vinegar here the yellowish shade which could come from the you know the yellowish shade which is from the impurities of, of flavonoids of the leaves and everything together with the lime this is disappearing and now the blue is more honestly blue of course this is not rational it is just a theoretical, theoretical vat to show you that uh, it works and it could be some primitive thing that could be but it is not rational to have the whole patch of leaves together so I will rinse that and it will be done for today of course with that handful of leaves we can have quite a lot of uh, silk to be dyed in because it, it is a super strong a super strong dye so I guess that in the past people just had small quantities and then at industrial area they started to import massively but not the processes they just imported the same there's probably less than one gram in that it's probably maybe 10 centigrams and even from that you can have some activity arms or something you know but that's easy so primitive sometimes is helpful to understand things um, to, to get the idea of how to make it simple.